I need a 30 for 30 to show that I'm different like Jordan and Pippin, your bitch. I need a 30 for 30 like Jalen and Webber. Nobody gon' fuck with my clip. I need a 30 for 30. Glad to have my brother Ray Season Leo here with me again for another segment of How About Them Cowboy Ray. What up, man? Man, you got it, brother. Glad to be back in here with you. Man, you already know what it is. Man, Cowboys Steelers. Historic yep. rivalry. I feel like I feel like uh <laughs> every old black man in the South is either a cowboy <laughs> fan or a Steeler fan. So yeah, yeah. I, I know yeah. Sunday was real, real hot. Especially since y'all game was way better than the Sunday night football game. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, and, and you know, I'd be lying to you if if I if I sat on this this show and said I I thought the Cowboys were gonna win or I knew the Cowboys were gonna be in it. I didn't. I really mm -hmm. thought they were gonna get blasted, you know what I mean, just because of the role that the Steelers had been on. Um, but I'm gonna break down two C's. One of the C's I talk about all the time on this show. Okay. Um the other C, I really don't mention much because you would expect millionaires to do this anyway, because it's something that they love to do and it's something that they're getting paid to do, compete. For the right. first time this season, you really saw the Dallas Cowboys compete. I don't know why. I don't know why they felt that the Steelers were the team that uh, would bring that out of them. But you saw guys lining up on both sides of the ball and just saying, man, at the end of the day, I think I can go toe to toe with you. Um, if I'm a defensive lineman, offensive lineman, I'm gonna whoop your tail tonight. You know what I mean? Like, like that's right, what it right, looked right. like. Um, we dominated both lines of scrimmage, man, for three quarters. I mean, to be quite honest, for three quarters, we won the 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 trenches. I can't say that for any game this season, and that was against one of the best teams in the NFL today, right? Yeah, one of the best teams in the NFL. Um, offensively, we were very impressive. Zeke was running hard. The offensive line banged up as they were, were opening holes. Uh, Tony Pollard, my backup running back, did, did an excellent job. Man, with a fourth-string quarterback, you really can't complain. Gary Gilbert stepped fourth, in. Fourth string. Fourth string. Fourth string. Gary Gilbert showed up and was poised. Uh, didn't show any kind of, like, uh, pressure. Wasn't rattled at all. At the end of the day, man, this is his first NFL start. He's going up against one of the best teams in the NFL, um, so I don't expect him to take shots down the field, right? I don't expect him to know the playbook through and through. At the end of the day, that young man gave his team a, gave his team an opportunity to win the game. We just needed to do a little bit more. Um, and in the NFL, man, the cream rises to the top. Um, as much as I hate the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I got uh, <laughs> friends, I got good friends, good friends. Like uh, my chief photographer, Lamont Brown at WAPT, gave me my first real job. Um, He's a diehard Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I love him. I love the man, but don't care for him when it comes to football. Um, <laughs> and at the end of the day, that's that's how deep it goes. But I would yeah. be I, I I'd be ridiculous to sit here and say what I saw um, from the Pittsburgh Steelers is not impressive. They played. They played. I won't say they played terrible. They got outplayed for three three quarters, three and a half quarters. But when they needed to make plays, Ben Roethlisberger. And that offense did what they had to do. And then the defense stepped up um, at the end there to, to just shut things out. Now, <clears throat> I watched that game, but I, I must have missed where they discussed what the world happened with our third string quarterback. Um, so so the guy, Ben DiNucci, yeah. um, nothing happened to him. I think I think sometimes you realize that a guy it just isn't. <laughs> he just isn't the guy to play that right. position at this level. Um, I think he's I think he's a good dude. Right. Um, for him to step up and, and, and play on Sunday night football, you know, the, the, the week prior. That's a dream come true for him. If he never sees the field again, he'll always have that story. He should not see the field again as a quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, because at the end of the day, um, he, he never did anything beyond 15 yards in that game that he played. Right. Everything was sideline to sideline, uh, sidearm passes where he was like a. a, a a diet, 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 zero calorie Patrick Mahomes. You heard Chris Collinsworth like trying to say, oh, look at this guy, you know, throwing sidearm like Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, but Patrick Mahomes does that and throws it 40 yards downfield. My guy was just throwing the ball out of bounds. You know what I mean? Um, and you can see the difference clearly between Ben DiNucci and, and Gary Gilbert. Gary Gilbert came in and from the word go was trying to attack the Pittsburgh still a defense. You know what I mean? So um, I was just very impressed with the fact um, that he came in with really one week of lead time, one week of lead time and playing against some of the best athletes in the world. That's impressive. Um, I would say it's about time for the rest of the team 
to step up and compete. Hey, man, I don't expect you to be the best team on the field every every week, but I do expect you to compete. And that's what I've been saying. The other C is culture. You don't have to teach somebody to compete. That's in you. You either got it or you don't. And so them doing that against the Pittsburgh Steelers shows me that they have the ability to compete. They just don't have the heart to do it every week. And that, more than anything, it's not, it's not lack of talent. That right there, more than anything, is why the Cowboys have an awesome opportunity to be a top five draft pick rather than a postseason contender. Okay, right there. Yep. <clears throat> With y'all being in the NFC East okay, and seeing how y'all just played the Steelers tough, I would say y'all still got a shot at your division. Right. Would you disagree with that? I would have based on the division. I would agree, but I would also say, okay. I mean, okay, that that's what that's I got a question for you. Then. Yeah, 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 no would, doubt. Would you rather y'all try to grow the culture and, and shoot for winning the NFC East as yeah, uh, paperweight championship? You might say that is given y'all record gonna be. Or do you say, you know what, let's think long term. Okay. Let's try to get a top draft pick. Which which one would you prefer in this instance? I'm going to always lean. Ray, personally, I'm going to always lean to the side of compete. That's just me. That's how that's how I'm built. Um, so if there's a chance, if, if Ray is the owner in GM, you do it. But Ray's not the owner in GM. Uh, Jerry Jones is. And, and I think what he, what, what he would say if he was on your show, um, he would say, you know, we're going to compete. He'll say that on the air, but behind closed doors, It'll be we need to go ahead and start trying to rebuild this team. Uh, maybe not like a complete rebuild, but just get pieces that can help uh, the future Dallas Cowboys win some win some playoff games and some championships. The fact of the matter is this: whoever wins the NFC East is going to lose in the first round. It's not going to be like oh anything can happen in the playoffs. No, the, the the team that represents the NFC East is the worst team in the postseason. They're going to get smoked by whoever they play. That's just the reality. So there's no need in you treating it as we can get hot and all of a sudden make a run. That's not going to happen. So if you're not going to have the possibility of getting hot, just fall back. Understand that this was not your year. It's not It's not the year for a lot of people in 2020. That's the reality outside of sports. <laughs> um, so just take this L, take 2020 as an L, right. come back and figure out what you want to do um, in 2021. What do you think about the chatter that they may do just that to yeah. try to get Trevor Lawrence, though? I mean, man, he, here's how I am when it comes to uh, drafting, right? Um, I don't get excited about first-round draft picks just because they're a first-rounder. Um, there have been plenty of teams that have had great first-round draft picks that have gone on to do great things. Dan Marino, John Elway, we're talking quarterbacks, right? Dan Marino, John Elway, you name it, the list goes on and on. But for every John Elway, there's an Achilles Smith or Ryan Leaf. So like, I that doesn't impress me Like to say – Oh, you have an opportunity to get Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is a phenomenal college football player. I have no clue what he's going to do at the next level, right? We all thought Aaron Rodgers was just a decent quarterback in college. He's one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. Tom Brady, one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. They weren't even close, right? Aaron Rodgers was at the end of the first round. Everybody, everybody except the Green Bay Packers missed on him, right? Tom Brady, everybody missed on him a couple of times. So this whole thing about, oh, if you just fall to the bottom, you'll get your franchise quarterback. That's just not true. That's just not true. You have an opportunity. You have an opportunity because nobody can jump in front of you. But at the end of the day, don't put your stock in just saying we're going to get Trevor Lawrence because Trevor Lawrence can show up and he can be John Elway. Or he can show up and he can be um, Matt Leiner. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, it, it, it just – it just Matt Liner. Matt Liner, man. So, like, it, don't waste your time trying to say we're going to wait on this guy uh, because you don't know what he's going to be. Uh, the chatter that I'm hearing, is that coming out of Cowboy Land or is that just major sports media running with a topic? That's everything. That's that's the major sports media running with a topic. That is Jerry Jones feeding them that stuff through, through back channels. Really? Um, yeah, that's 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 the type of thing that he like. Jerry Jones will do anything to keep his franchise in the spotlight. So they're not winning. So you got to talk about him in some other form of fashion. The Dak, what are we gonna do with Dak thing is worn off now, right? Because Dak is has made it a point to not be in the spotlight. He's very much a team guy, so he's there just simply to help those quarterbacks in the quarterback room 
figure out the game plan. When it comes to being on the sidelines, you haven't seen Dak on the sidelines, so there's nothing to talk about, right? Jerry Jones is a master at making sure that you talk about his team all the time. That, that's just a reality. So I could absolutely see him feeding this to folks um, that think that they have Jerry Jones's ear, right? Um, and so they're, they're, they're putting these things out there. At the end of the day, it comes down to this. Jerry Jones can feed you this. Jerry Jones can even believe that Trevor Lawrence is a possibility. You have to be the worst team in the NFL. So are you willing to tank? Are you willing to openly tank? You and I were joking about it. The New York Jets are tanking. <laughs> they were up two to three touchdowns against the Patriots. Mm. The players were trying to come back, right? right? Joe Flacco came, brought them in, and then brought them down. And the New York Jets organization at the top was like, Whew, we almost won that game. You could see that. You could literally right. see them tanking to try to get Trevor Lawrence. The Jaguars are doing the same thing, right? Uh -huh. They've taken out they've taken out Gardner Minshew from right here in Mississippi and put in a no-name guy. They are tanking. That's what you have to do to openly admit that you are willing to take a chance on Trevor Lawrence. Would Jerry Jones do it? I doubt it. I doubt it. As somebody who's covered that when he was yeah. in college. <clears throat> And being a diehard cowboy fan and reading their beats and all that kind of stuff, how do you think Dak is taking this kind of chit chat, knowing I, that he doesn't have a contract, knowing yeah. he's sitting somewhere laid up with his ankle jacked up? Yeah. And he and it's chit chat in major sports media about, oh, they might they might be better suited to tank and get another quarterback. Yeah. Well, you know, how, the, how you think he's taking that? You know. I'd like to sit here and tell you that, that Dak isn't thinking about that, but that, that's just not true. You know, a lot of these quarterbacks are built off of, of having um, having an ego. Aaron Rodgers has one. Tom Brady has one. Cam Newton. All the great quarterbacks got a little bit of ego to them, right? So <clears throat> I think in, in, in that vein, he hears it, and, and it rubs him the wrong way because of what he has done. And you're right, he doesn't have a contract. But like I said, I've said this on your show before, Dak has leverage. Dak can come in now and say – Without me, you are trash. I keep you in games. I'm so good at my job that I just keep you in games, right? If they say, well, we can't, we can't, you know, guarantee you anything besides another one-year deal because of your ankle. Okay, well, the New Orleans Saints are going to have an opening. Drew Brees is going to go home. Dak is from Louisiana. He can use that as leverage. So I just, I see it both ways. We're talking, this is just nothing but a negotiation now between Dak and Jerry Jones. Mm -hmm. And at that point, friendships how much you how much you like jerry jones or how much jerry jones likes that all that goes off the table it's about leverage what can you prove what can you hold over somebody's head that can say if you don't want me it's fine i'll go play for the new orleans saints you think jerry jones wants to lose one of the most popular nfl players to the new orleans saints the fan uh, and y'all got a slick little rivalry with them so yeah. i'm starting to notice the fan base would flip would flip now winning cures all don't get me wrong if Dak left and 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 they got trevor lawrence or any quarterback and he started winning playoff games consistently wouldn't matter but we haven't been doing that so that that's 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 not guaranteed right the one thing that's guaranteed is since you've had Dak prescott you've had a guy that has gotten better every year and at the peak which was his this year when he was peaking Mm -hmm. He was the reason you were leading the league in total offense, passing yards, and the reason why you were in every game. Your defense was trash. That's why you lost them. But he's the reason why you were scoring 30, 40 points a game. Mm -hmm. Who y'all got coming up next? Man, honestly, I don't even know. Well, y'all might be on the bow. I don't even know. Oh, after, I, I see it now. It look like y'all got the, the Vikings next, but it's after on the, on the after that game. After that game, this is this is the this is the honest truth. Okay. After that game, my brain checked out. Ray is a competitor, but but Ray is tanking. What? Ray is tanking from a fan <laughs> standpoint because that was like the the last game that really intrigued me. You know what uh, I mean? Like to say, uh, let's let's see what happens. I'm not looking forward to anything else. We're gonna get boat raced by the Ravens when we play them. Uh, we may we may split with the Redskins and the Eagles. Right? We may do that. Man, the rest of these games, I don't care. I really don't. There's nothing to look forward to. That's what I mean. Like, for me to be a fan, I can have this mentality. Uh -huh. I can turn I can turn on the TV and watch them, and whatever happens, it happens at this point, right? right. Um, you know me to be really upset when the Cowboys lose. Uh -huh. 
I'm not I'm, I'm not on that. I'm just not because I understand that there's nothing to play for. This is 2020. Dak is out. The Cowboys are terrible. Man, pack it up and just figure it out. I, um, I'm, I'm looking at y'all's schedule right now. Like I said, yeah, y'all, all, run y'all all on the bye week yeah. coming up. Yeah. I'm trying to look for something that will intrigue you and make you not tank the rest of the way. Make, I, make uh, Hold on. Make me not tank or make yeah, Jerry yeah. not tank? That's two yeah. different things. No, no. Make you. To make you feel like, oh, I'm I'm, I'm locked in. Oh, hold on. Whatever. <laughs> cool out, oh, man. You know what? No, no, you know what? You know what? Um, I would like to see a competitive Cowboys 49ers game too, to like okay. relive, to like, to like, to like relive the, the glory days. Cause honestly, both of us are trash. And so to, <laughs> to relive those glory I, days, yeah. you know, your brother, you about know, that that's one, fine. That's fine. <laughs> Anything that they say is different. They know they're lying too. So at the end of the day, this is the real show with real, not opinions, real facts. The fact of the matter is neither one of our teams are postseason ready. Right. In fact, we are closer to draft ready than postseason ready. And if that's the and if that's the if that's the true outlook, which we know it is, everybody just needs to stop. Just stop. Watch the good teams play. Watch the Packers play. Watch the Saints man, play. Cool watch loud, the Buccaneers man. play. Jared's watch like, the you, Seattle you Seahawks Jared's, play. Uh, Raiden's right now. You're hurting Jerry's Raiden. Man, I almost said something. <laughs> <laughs> man. Hey. <laughs> man. Hey, 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 like Andre 3000 said, yeah. I'm going to leave that joint like that. I'm going to leave that joint like that, man. Hey, I will. You know me. I will watch every Cowboys game, win, lose, or draw. I'm always going to watch. I'm just a diehard Cowboys fan like that. Right. But I'm just going to be honest with you. There's not much to look forward to. Because, because who? hey, I, I tell you what, if you're a Cowboys fan or even a Cowboys hater, you never know. We're on our fourth-string quarterback, a dude by the name of Garrett Gilbert, who played in a league that don't even exist anymore. I may very well be playing for the Cowboys by the time this season is over. So, right. so that's what you got to look forward to. Me <laughs> starting at DB because my star cornerback just just got hurt for the season. My rookie, um, uh, Trayvon Diggs, is oh, out for the, the season. You, yeah, that's the boy you were high on, yeah. So who knows? Y'all might tune in and you might see Ray Coleman holding down holding down a corner spot, getting burnt like the rest of them. I'll fit right in. <laughs> and that is, how about them Cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> My man. Go. Go. Subscribe to our daddy's YouTube channel. He's the best. Hit the like button. Turn on the notifications.